Hello everyone and welcome to this week's video. Today I'm going to be explaining how torsion limited slip differentials work. Now when I first watched a video uh, giving an animation of a torsion limited slip differential, I thought there would be no possible way to explain how these work using a whiteboard. Nonetheless, here we are and we are going to use a whiteboard and we are going to figure out how a torsion limited slip differential works. So before we get started, there's two things I want to say. First, this video is part of a playlist on differentials. The rest of the videos coming up until this one are extremely useful in knowing before trying to figure this out. If you go straight to trying to figure out how a torsion limited slip differential works without understanding how a regular differential works, then it'll probably be a lot more difficult. So I recommend watching the rest of the playlist before watching this video. Second, you need to watch a 3D animation of this thing moving so that you have an image in your head of what's going on. I'm going to explain it, but I can't give you a 3D model. So I'm going to link an annotation right here, and if you click on that, it'll open up a video in a new tab, and you can watch that real quick. And then what happens is you watch that, you come back, and I explain what all is going on. So. First, let's go through what's meshed to what. Which gears are meshed with which gears. So just like a traditional uh, differential, you've got your pinion gear. We just ignore everything around this. Uh, you've got your pinion gear here rotating this ring gear. So pinion gear, ring gear. It rotates the ring gear. These are meshed together. Great, we've got one of those meshed gears out of the way. Another gear that are meshed together are these spur gears. So these spur gears are connected and they are also connected to a worm wheel. Now this worm wheel is helical and it looks like this and so what it has is two spur gears connected one on each end. The worm wheel is meshed to a worm gear, what we have in green. And the worm gear is on a spline connected to the drive shaft. So if this worm gear rotates, this green rotates, then the drive shaft will rotate. Okay, here's the trick with this worm gear and the worm, ge worm gear and worm wheel. The worm gear, gear, I cannot say any of this. The worm gear, when it rotates, will rotate the worm wheel. So if you turn this worm gear forward here, then it's going to rotate this worm wheel. All right, the reverse cannot happen. A worm wheel cannot rotate and then rotate this worm gear. It, it doesn't work like that. So. That's kind of important to know, and that will have a, a big difference later on when I explain how you have a difference in wheel speed, so from one side to the other. So the two purposes of this uh, video here that I'm going to go over is how does this torsion limited slip differential turn the wheels forward, and then the second part is how does it differentiate speed from one to the other. I'm going to make another video after this one which explains how torque is transferred left to right or right to left. So what we've got going on is you've got this pinion gear. It turns, rotates the ring gear. The ring gear has this differential housing and inside of that you have all of these gears. So within the differential housing you have these worm wheels with the spur gears on the outsides of them, on, on both sides. And going through each of those worm wheels is a shaft. Now that shaft connects to the differential housing. Now typically there's going to be about three of these worm wheels around this. So if you look inside of the differential from, from this side, if you're looking at it at this angle, you would see these three worm wheels all rotating around one worm gear. So as that rotates, it rotates this uh, green worm gear. So, as this rotates forward, these are meshed together and by the spur gears, and they rotate forward and they push down on this worm gear. So what happens is this uh, worm wheel, as it rotates around, it's going to pull this uh, worm gear around with it. Now this is helical. Remember as I've shown as I've shown here. So when that force comes down, this is what it really looks like you've got this helical and it's meshing with another helical gear and it's going to push it down. So as it pushes it down, it can't rotate the gear, so instead it just rotates it forward. When I say rotate, I mean it can't, it can't um, 
rotate it as in move it this way in the direction that the gears rotate. So instead what it does is it pushes it forward. Now while it pushes it forward, it rotates this drive shaft. So both of these drive shafts rotate forward. Okay, so when that happens, these uh, worm wheels are not rotating at all. They're just moving around the worm gears. Now that's important because that means both tires are rotating at the same speed. So this is a scenario where you're just accelerating in a straight line and both wheels are rotating at the same speed. Now we're going to get into the tricky part of how do you differentiate speed from one axle to the other. So let's take another look at what's going on with these worm gears and the worm wheels. So when you spin the worm gear this direction, spin the drive shaft forward, it's going to want to rotate that worm wheel counterclockwise. Now even if you have the same setup on the opposite side of a uh, drive shaft, for example this drive shaft here, as this drive shaft rotates forward it also wants to rotate the worm wheel counterclockwise. So now put these two together. Well when you put the two together you can see that they're rotating in the same direction. So you can't have spur gears rotating in the same direction. It doesn't work. They stop each other. That's important to understand of how one wheel is going to go faster than the other. So if one wheel is going to go faster than the other, then obviously one of these spur gears is going to have to rotate the opposite direction that it wants to. So let's look at a little visual aid here. This wheel here, the right wheel, think about this as the back of the car, the right wheel is going to rotate faster than the left wheel, faster, slower. So we're only looking at what's in green, ignore all the red. So as it rotates faster over here, what's going to happen is it's going to rotate this green worm gear. Now that worm gear, we know that as it rotates, it's going to rotate the worm wheel in this direction. So as that worm wheel rotates in this direction, it's going to rotate this worm wheel in the opposite direction. Now, obviously this worm wheel rotating the opposite direction isn't going to be able to rotate the tire in the opposite direction. So what happens? Well, what happens is, as this rotates in the opposite direction, it passes over the stationary uh, worm gear. So what we've got happening is the worm gear is stationary and the worm wheel rotates. So it's got this helix on it. So as it rotates, it meshes with the worm gear and just passes right along around it as it's spinning in the opposite direction of this one. So what that means is this wheel is moving slower than this wheel. And that probably didn't make any sense at all. But that's what's happening. So it's all about relativity. This wheel is not actually moving backwards. It's just moving slower. So from a relativity stand point of view, this wheel is moving forwards and this wheel is moving backwards if you put yourself at, if you say that zero is somewhere in between those two speeds. And what that allows you to do is to realize that these are going to be rotating in opposite directions while this rotates around the worm gear and Consequently, you have a slower moving left tire. Now, if you do the opposite, if you have this wheel moving faster, then what does it want to do? Well, it wants to rotate its uh, spur gear counterclockwise, just like this one had done previously. So it does that. It rotates it counterclockwise. Now we're looking at what's all in red and we're ignoring the green. And then that's going to rotate this gear, this spur gear, clockwise. So while that rotates clockwise, it's moving around in a circular motion around the worm gear. And by doing that, this is staying relatively stationary, and so it's moving slower than the other wheel. So, the two things we've just learned is how does a torsion limited slip differential rotate everything inside of it forward, and hence rotate the two wheels forward, and how does it allow for one wheel to rotate faster than the other, like an open differential, so that when you go around the corner, the outside tire can rotate quicker? So, 
I hope that made some sense. If not, uh, try watching it again. And if you're still confused, then leave me some comments and I will try my best to make this clear. I know it's a pretty difficult topic to visualize, so I really do want to make this clear though. Um, and in my next video, I will be explaining how the torque transfer works. And it's a bit more tricky than how the machine rotates, so it's going to get a little more complicated. Um, fantastic, right? So, yeah, just leave a comment if you're confused. Um, try watching it again, and try watching that video that I linked, which gives you the 3D visual so that you can kind of understand what's happening. And then in my next video, I'll explain the torque transfer.